Hello and welcome to Living with Marcial. Hello, hello, hello. How are y'all doing? I don't like these caps. I feel like the distance between where the liquid is and where it's supposed to come out is just like, oh, you know what it is? The person didn't depress it correctly. What is going on, guys? How are y'all feeling? You know what it is? There's two caps in there. How are y'all feeling? I could say happy Sunday or happy Monday, depending on what part of the planet you are, what hemisphere you live in. Hope everybody's doing good. Sunday was, interestingly enough, a very, very busy day for many people. I was completely tired. I was... I, I would want to use the word obliterated if I could, but I was just done for the day. But I had a lot of things to do, so I was able to get a lot of it done, but kind of um, at half mass. There you go. Now I know what happened. It was double capped. But what did you guys do for Sunday? Were there, were there any uh, fun events? I got to see a live that George Zaharoff had speaking with the Zaharoff in Australia. That was nice. And he had um, Ross from TLTG there conversing with them. I really like that. I feel like George is just an awesome human being. Really nice person. I was able to purchase the rosé and the tabac today. Well, not today yesterday from him and hopefully this week I'll be able to tea tea day and Latifa 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 what is going on y'all how are you feeling I was mentioning that I got to purchase from um Zaharoff the rosé and the tabac and then this coming week how are you feeling this coming week I want to be able to purchase the, they have like a trio from there. So I'm gonna try and get as many of the Zaharoff fragrances as possible. Do any of you have any Zaharoffs? Do you have any Zaharoff fragrances? So this is gonna be my first. And I kind of wanted to wait till this year to make the purchases and smell them and you know, make videos. I kind of, I'm hoping to make a few days of Zaharoff. So it'll be consecutive um, episodes of Marshall's Blends. Thank you for singing my name. <laughs> I'm going to try and uh, do that. I'm excited because Zaharoff, George is a very nice person. He is, uh, you know, human. He's human. He connects to people. Well, did, what did you smell during this weekend, Latifa? If anything, did you smell anything new? What I've been wearing, honestly enough, can you believe? Uh, is this one. I've been rocking the Rose by Paul Smith. And I've been rocking some Swiss Arabians. Uh, yesterday, I wore the Tectopian from Avon. I've been rocking some, you know, pretty good fragrances for the weekend. For the I consider weekend Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so it's cool. Now, what I will say about the Rose is that it doesn't necessarily smell... I don't smell it as much, but people do still smell it. I have none. I've heard so much talk, but haven't sniffed any. Yes, yes, yes. I'm excited. So, excuse me. When I do the week of Zaharoff, hopefully I'll be able to do some random giveaways with that. I'm going to try and, uh, I don't know if they have, they have the like samples and like travel sets. I'll see if I can order a few of those, but I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. And so I was listening to them talk and they were saying that tabac is a very, um, it's like for the general public, rosé is loved by a lot of people because it is so unique, but it's so good. So I'm like, I'm excited. I'm excited. I just want to try them all. Nothing new this weekend, my friend. It's been a busy couple of days with family, so haven't been able to sample anything new. You know what? You're right. The weekend has been busy for so many people. So it's kind of like, you know, if you weren't cooking, you were cleaning. If you weren't cleaning, you were doing this, doing that entertaining guests so it was very busy i can imagine i can imagine i had a pretty busy uh, weekend as well just I, I was saying earlier like i just felt 
like bogged down a bit and I also wasn't drinking as much coffee as I usually do so I'm coming to understand that coffee the caffeine is kind of essential for me you know totally interesting totally totally I waited for this year hey como estas random como te sientes I waited for this Hey, I saw you were there uh, also with the George Zaharoff interview. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I was able to order some fragrances. And um, yeah, so uh, coffee is important for me, I guess. I'm realizing that I have to take the nootropics, but the caffeine is also important to kind of keep me up and going. And I don't know, but yeah. So that's what I've been smelling. What have you been smelling? ¿Qué has estado usando de fragancia? Have you got your nose on the elemental fragrances? No, not yet. So that's this year as well. Thank you very much. Um, you know, one thing I got to say about elemental is that they keep in touch with the people that they've reached out to very regularly. Um, so I am excited to do that. I know that Rico recently was speaking about them, um, about the elemental fragrances. So I'm excited to try them out. They are another house that 2022 uh, is going to connect me with. So I'm ready. I can't do without my caffeine, Marcial. So I feel... Thank you so much. Sí, dímelo, random. Dímelo, dímelo. ¿Qué fragancia has usado? ¿Qué fragancia usaste para este fin de semana? I'm asking random what fragrance did he use for the uh, weekend. So yeah, that's that's essentially it. So yeah, there's going to be that. There's um, MM Ozzy. Hey, what's up? How are you, my friend? What's going on? Good morning, mi amigo. How are you? <laughs> How are you feeling? It's good to see you. I love coffee, but I like it cold. You like it cold. So do you make it and then you ice it or you make it and then you let it go cold? Because there's a difference. So I had my first cup of coffee hot, but then this one I let it go cold on its own. So Yes, yeah, so Rico spoke a few of my faves from that house. They are all really good, but a few stand out more for me so like which ones would that be which ones latif are the ones that stand out most for you because i i'm just excited i'm gonna try to do as much of them as possible for the week that i am gonna be smelling the elementals which i'm excited about that i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna redo uh shelter and perfume i'm gonna redo you know god permitting i'm alive right <laughs> shelter and perfume um City Rhythm, Elementals, uh, Zaharoff. And honestly, it was it, the conversation that George had with the people was, was fascinating. Um, I had written down there uh, in, the, in the comment about indie, niche, and artisanal. And so then I guess someone uh, read the question and posed it. And they asked, what did people think uh, Zaharoff's uh, company is? And so, yes, it is definitely, by definition, a designer fragrance, but it is also artisanal in the sense that, um, sorry, indie. It is also indie in the sense that it is owned by him. The fragrances are owned by him, creatively directed by him, but perfumed by someone else. So, I, what I, in my opinion, on the fragrance side, it is indie, but it is uh, a designer fragrance. I use business over pleasure from Zaharoff. Oh, wow. Listen, I've heard, I've heard so much good things about business over pleasure. I personally fell in love with um, La Serena, 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 Siren. Siren, I personally fell in love with that. His rose fragrance is one of the most interesting executions of rose I've ever got my nose on. What? For real? And you know I love Rose, so that's fascinating. And to hear that from you, Latifa, which, I mean, I'm under the impression you've smelled many Rose fragrances. All good. I work. Just stop by. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That means super much. That means a lot. Hey, Vintage Perfumes. Hey, Time to Musk. It's Time to Musk. <laughs> Mogul, Oud People. So, uh, yes, Oud People. So I have smelled Oud People. Oud People was very good, like f fascinatingly good. Um, I, I, if I remember correctly, I 
didn't care too much for the opening, but once it got into the heart of that dry down, it was like, oh, wonderful. So London, fantastic, rose, leather, leather, wow. Wow, so you've been able to smell a few. That is one, I can't, oh. So Latifa, let me know if you're up to, you know, join me on an episode when we talk about, when I talk about that. It's gonna be fascinating. I make it my on my Keurig with ice in the cup. Very smart. So it's automatically iced. Very smart. Me gusta eso. <laughs> Not owned by a conglomerate. Hey, so not what's not owned by a conglomerate? And I wore Montal's Intense Cafe for New Year's. Wonderful. Montal Intense Cafe for me is one of the best uh, florals. One of the best florals. Whenever I wear it, I have to add the CO2 extract, um, caffeine extract, to give it an actual intense coffee smell. What's going on, Time to Musk Up? So you were mentioning not owned by a conglomerate. What, what did you mean? Hey, John. Yes, I love Signature Rosé. It's one of the best rose scents. Listen, that's what I keep hearing. I keep hearing how, like, fantastic it is. And I, I just, I can't wait to get my nose on it. I can't wait to get my nose on it, you know? Like, if you know me, you know I love rose fragrances. Rose fragrances for me are... I don't know. What other fragrances do I like? Um, I like fresh fragrances, but rose fragrances for me are like, I don't know. I just can't live without them. Yes, I think I got all of Luke's samples. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. ¿Qué pasó, John? What is up, man? I could send you a decad if you like. No, no. Because I, I Thank you. I appreciate that. But what I want to do is I'm going to do the... I'm going to order them all i'm gonna order them all and then depending on how i set it up if i can i'm gonna try and do a week of it i think the longest i've done with a uh, fragrance uh, company was like nine days so i'm gonna try and do the most would be nine days i don't know how many fragrances they have so i want to order them all and then i'm also going to see how i work out uh random giveaways but i aprecio aprecio la idea mi amigo de corazón i still haven't sniffed all of them Okay, oh my goodness, this is going to be fun. And if you guys have any other um, indie or artisanal houses that you think I should give a go to, uh, let me know, let me know. I, you can mention it here and I can screenshot it or you can uh, send it to me through a DM. Hey, what's up, Noel? So Noel Trill uh, Harmony Fragrance is, an, is another uh fragrance company that I'm going to be smelling. I meant to say that if a brand isn't bought out by a conglomerate, then I consider it indie or artisanal, like Zahara, which I place indie designer in a way. Yes! 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 That's, yes, you hit it on the nose. That's why I say it is designer because they do leather products, they do um, cigars and things like that. So now it's kind of falls under designer, but it is, it is. I really, I like that. Um, it is indie because artisanal means that the person who is the perfumer is the, oh, the one that, you know, owns the company and it, they, they haven't necessarily gone through the, uh, full professional training and blah, 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 you know? And, uh, but indie means exactly that. So he is an, it is indie, but it is designer. So for me, I do consider him by definition designer, but as far as the fragrance aspect of it, indie. You're, I, I love it. You're hundred percent correct. Time to musk up. I love Rose too. Marcial, do you like Oud too? Yes. I do like Oud a lot. Have you heard of Oud Factory? No, I have not. He does a stunning rose and dark oud oil a fragrance. Okay, so I'm going to screenshot that. Oud Factory, you said it's called. So I'll look into them. I'll look into them. You, oh wait, Trill, you have a rose fragrance? You have a rose fragrance? Okay. I see. Oops. Let's see. I don't want to double press and then send myself out. There you go. 
So it's chill. Let's see. Um, hey, what's up, Tony? Let's see if uh, just chilling. Awesome. So true. I, I don't know. If you said you have a rose fragrance, put me on. That's like the argument of Guerlang, niche or designer. So what, okay, John, so what's your take on that? That's a very good, that's a very good one. What's your take on it? Because I am of the belief that a designer house can produce a niche fragrance. In other words, a designer house can have hundreds of designer fragrances, and if they, oh, wonderful, Trill has three. But Trill, anyways, I'm going to be ordering your, your, the samples. So I'm, it, it's good. It's good. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I can't wait to see your interpretation of Rose, bro. I really can't. Um, let me see. Niche that became designer. So there you go. So, okay. So now by definition, right? And of course, it's always, anyone can argue anything. But by definition, hey, what's up, bro? Pedro in the house. Who you with? Who you with? Um, so that's my brother. That's my little brother. Uh, so the question is, Gerlang is designer, que no? Okay, so yes, Gerlang is designer. But by strict definition, to be niche, you have to be sold within uh, under 25 doors, meaning that you are not super accessible, right? And then there's other people who consider niche to be uh, based on the materials that are used. Spartacus, Cleopatra, and what? Oh, okay. Okay. They started out as only doing fragrances, but expanded to makeup and stuff too. Hey, it smells good, 007. Um, thank you so very much, my friend. I hope you and the family are doing excellent and beyond great. I'm grateful to you all. Sorry, I'm just taking a screenshot because my memory's not so good. All right, there you go. So, to, uh, okay, okay. Hey, Thomas. So here, Time to Musk Up says, to me, Get Along is 100% niche. They don't design clothing. They make beauty products, but their niche is fragrance, in my opinion. And listen, one thing I'll tell you is this. When it comes to the debate on, or the conversation on niche and on indie and artisanal, I think artisanal, nobody's really confused about artisanal. And very few people feel confused about indie. But when it comes to niche, I feel that niche is so controversial because niche means status. You know, where indie and artisanal are not necessarily status uh, marking, niche is a status, status marking uh, conversation. So I think that that's where that comes from. But if you were to look at it, I think uh, with a non judgmental eye, a non status making eye, the designation of niche, meaning in the corner, you know out of in the in the margin right so if it's sold within 25 doors or less in a country then it's niche so that's why i say a designer house can produce a niche fragrance but that does not mean that all of their fragrances are niche because if all of their fragrances are sold elsewhere then it's not niche you know but if it's sold under 25 doors then yes it is niche uh, can uh, if you guys know the same way Gerlang got its start, so did Avon. 1886, Avon began as fragrance, and it was just fragrance, and then it branched out into other things. So now their fragrances are considered to be catalog, right, or or uh, designer, but more catalog, right? But they originally began as something that would have been designated as a niche. Now remember, niche did not become a thing until 1975, and the first house to uh, legally establish itself as a niche firm was Le Jardin Retrouvé, you know? Uh, Gutsa, what's his first name? Yuri Gutsatz, Le Jardin Retrouvé. So that was the first established niche firm. All right, anything else? was fragrance. Lips sealed on the third one. Okay, no problem. 
It's still under construction right now, right, Tro? <laughs> hey, we have uh, Iron Man in the house, Tony Starks. What's going on? At the end of the day, it's a great topic. Some people just get really heated. Absolutely. And the thing about me is that I don't, uh, I don't give room for the heat. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, I feel like the conversations that we have here on this in this house, right, should be encouraging, should be motivating, should be stimulating and educational, you know, not combative, uh, not degrading, not looking to create an issue, because that's, that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> Gen 2 was pulled to make launching easier. Wonderful. I'm just excited. I'm excited for you, Trill, because, you know, and, and let me tell you something. If you have not seen his recent picture I'm like, Trill does not need to hire any model or actor for his product. Trill is the model. Trill is the model. Have you seen dozens of times? Trill, okay. Yeah, I can really care less at the end of the day. Yeah, you know what I mean? For me, if you guys, you guys know me. You guys know that I will just as easy purchase a fragrance that's $25, as I will a fragrance that's $250. I, you know what I was thinking? Can I tell you guys something? Can I tell you something? So, I was thinking, right? I was walking, because uh, I was coming I, to this job, coming here, and I got off, took the five train, so I got off on the east, and I walked over to the west. And honestly, on the walk to the west, I was thinking to myself, I says, Listen, Marcial, there are some fragrances that cost a lot of money. For example, Sultan, right? There's like the crown fragrances. They're like Mondo Bucks. And so I was asking myself, Marcial, ¿tú te atreverías a pagar 500, 600 dólares por un, una fragancia? And I was like, mm. like, I got to find out if the fragrance is worth 500. Six hundred dollars because the crown fragrances. How you? How many of you have heard of the crown fragrance? Now the bottles are gorgeous. Oh yeah, the other the other filter. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's supposed to make a person look good, but I tell you, when I wear it, I, it, it, I don't know. But whatever. <laughs> so part of the argument with uh, argument with niche and designer is price. Yes, you're absolutely tr correct, Trill. And so yesterday, someone brought up the fact that there are niche houses that don't sell their fragrances for expensive prices, exorbitant prices. You know what I mean? So then the question is, is it niche if it's cheap? <laughs> you know? And my answer is niche is niche. 25 doors for me or less. You know what I mean? Mi amico, buongiorno, buongiorno. The price, in all honesty, has nothing to do. But that's what I'm saying, John. So, like, for you, the price has nothing to do with it, right? But for other people, the price has everything to do with it. Although we do know that there are definite designer fragrances that sell for what would be considered prices that niche fragrances uh, charge. For example, Chanel, you know what I mean? But you're absolutely correct. In the definition, price has nothing to do with it. But for some people, that is kind of what... what, what so I was... Oh, that was, I was a part of a, the conversation that I had with someone else. Where I was like, growing up, I wore Axe. Correct. Axe for me was fancy. I was broke. I was poor. You know what I... I was, I was indigent, okay? You know what indigent means? It means you got nothing. So for me, Axe was was everything, you know? And to be able to get a fragrance, even a bootleg, not for nothing, get a bootleg fragrance um, from East 149th and 3rd, you know what I mean? Uh, $5 of, a $5 bottle of gray flannel or Fahrenheit was a big deal because it smells good, you know? Uh, so for people like who, who I was at that time, something like a Blue de Chanel would be niche. Something like a Sauvage would be niche. Something like an Eros would be niche. Because guess what? It is out of the usual reach for a person like me. You know what I mean? And, that, and so for some people, that's the designation. It's out of reach. And so it would be out of reach for a person who, you know, 
was getting paid four twenty five the hour and would aspire to eight dollars the hour. You you know what I'm saying? So it's it's different for everybody. People be getting weird about calling Tom Ford niche and certain Dior niche. Yes, absolutely. So now, but well, there you go. So now I was able to help you understand kind of why a person might call it niche. It's because for them, it is you know niche meaning you know in the fringe, kind of not so accessible, you know. And that's that that's that's what I would call systemically niche. <laughs> Tom Ford is niche for me. There you go, Tro. There you go. Tom Ford, I would classify as luxury. So there, that is correct. That is correct. Because then there are luxury fragrances, right? Luxury fragrances are designer fragrances that are made with the highest or higher grade materials, uh, better blending, you know, and have a usually more attractive presentation, right? There's more art and uh, handwork in the preparation of the bottle. It's not just some factory mass-produced bottle. I call private blend privé lines higher and designer. Yes, so those things are definitely like, they're still designer. Again, if they're being sold, ooh, what filter popped up there? Oh, that was accidental, but I'll keep it for a few seconds. Axe Marine, yes, I love Axe Marine. Yes, Voyage or that, yes. Designer, niche, indie, whatever, smells good, I get, yes. I am a firm believer in that. $10 at Ross was my joy. Wow, you go, thank you, that's awesome. Too bad they cut the Oriental. What do you mean they cut the Oriental? Like as in the, 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 the fragrance line? Phoenix and Kilo. Oh my god. Oh, you remember Phoenix, bro. Phoenix changed my life. The other one that changed my life was the chocolate one. When they first came out with the chocolate one, I was like, what do I need in life? Like, what do I need in life? What is life? Where does life come from? Because where life came from, this axe chocolate must have come from there. That's how good it was for me. Curve! Oh my goodness, bro. Curve. I remember Curve. I used to love the bottles, yo. And let me tell you, to this day, Curve still smells good. So if we're going on price, I paid 180 for my Gucci Intense Oud. Now, Gucci niche don't make sense. But that's why I'm saying, uh, John, it's good to have your standard definition of something but then flexibility is essential because there's different life experiences. So with each life experience, the definition for something, it, it, it gets not altered. It, it has been something different for someone else. You know what I mean? Axe, oh, oh, Axe Oriental. I never smelled Axe Oriental. <gasps> Darn it. That must have been like, Ambric and spicy and just really good. And the sillage it must have had. Oh my goodness. Tell me about it. Perfume temple temple. Tell me about it. But yes, so I so that's why I'm saying, John. So for a person like myself, that would have been niche. I would have called it niche, you know? And so and I'll tell you something, I'll take it a step further. So me with that understanding that um, life experience and that I'm going to use the word of education, right? Level of education. Uh, and I call a fragrance niche and then to have another person to try and down me for calling it niche instead of trying to understand me. And then, uh, let me see what else I could put on here. Come here, put that filter. <laughs> okay, this is a different filter. Let's see what this one does. Oh, interesting. I don't care for much. Okay, I'll, I'll stay with this one, it's kind of shiny. So to have a person then tell me, oh, but that's not niche, what is your problem? You don't, you know, then that, at that point in my life, would have made me feel horrible. You know what I mean? So that's why I say that level of flexibility is important because it can keep a door open or it can close a door, it can, uh, discourage a person or it can encourage a person so 
your definition of niche is not the end all be all. My understanding of what is niche is not the end all be all. Even a perfumer, uh, their definition of niche is not the end all be all, but there is a standard definition and the standard definition is 25 doors or less. Just to, just to be uh, gen general, you know what I mean? And that's not arguable. It's like, it, that's what it is, 25 doors or less. And then from there, the nuances can be uh, debated. You know what I mean? Gucci Intense Oud is running 90 euro on Notino in Europe. Gucci Intense Oud, Gucci Intense Oud. I haven't tried that one. Axe had this really good holiday one. I forgot what it was called, but released in like 2000. Does anyone remember which one was the holiday Axe that was released in 2000? Did it have mint? I never ever got to experience Notino. Hey, Yellow, how are you? What is going on, my beauty? Yellow. <laughs> so standardly speaking, price has... No, that's why I'm saying price has nothing to do with it. But that doesn't mean that if a person says niche because of the price, doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means that that's how they see it. As that's what um, we are saying, Marci is that what we are saying, Marcial? Uh, so that, listen, I said what I said. I said what I said, okay? And you know I do not backtrack. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what it is. That's the, so that's, that's what I'm saying, is that there are specifics for definitions of niche, of indie, of artisanal. But then there are nuances, and one of the nuances is, is it, it may not be niche to you, right? But for a person who isn't, it's not so accessible, they'll call it niche, and don't knock the person for calling it niche. It's almost like when a person says, uh, let's say they spray this, and they're like, oh, this smells very niche, it's very niche smelling. Don't knock the person for saying very niche smelling. That's their opinion, you know? Okay, it's niche smelling. What is niche smelling? When a person says niche smelling, every single fragrance enthusiast knows what niche smelling means. Niche smelling means that it smells special and it smells expensive. So the, the person who is saying it may not have as much knowledge, so let them express themselves the way they express themselves, and you can, on this side, which I have done many times, and I've developed wonderful friendships that way, I've said, hey, what's up, you know? I, I heard you say this, and I wanted to find out your opinion. I was recently reading this information, and it said, niche is blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, and then start a conversation from there, because it's not that I'm correcting, it's that I'm trying to understand where they're coming from, and then they can understand where I am, and that's it. It's a sharing of the mind, a meeting of the minds. Let me see. Okay, Farida says, slept early, just woke up. Are you reading Born a Crime? Yes, I am. I'm going to be reading Born a Crime. I'm going to be reading from chapter two. Chapter two. I love this book. I love this book. And I did a random giveaway today with the... Um, excuse me, Cochino, with the um, DJ Khaled, the keys, and I got to really, uh, a young man, he's a dad with his daughter, just the interaction was so wonderful. I was like, I'm, I gotta give him the book. Get Elizabeth Taylor, Passion for Men, and you'll have an idea of what Axe Oriental was. Wonderful, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, you are awesome. Okay. A slightly sweet fouge, fouge, fouge. You know I love fougés. I'm just, I'm a fouge. I'm a fougeaholic. <laughs> John, I gotta tell you, this tickled me so funny. Um, let me see. I, I mean, we can pick our genders these days. Why not pick out what words mean whatever we want them to? Hello. Okay, sir. Okay. So we're not going to be sarcastic like that to that level because 
that's a totally other conversation. As far as fragrances are concerned, uh, again, I'll repeat, when it comes to what is niche and what is not, what a person calls niche, uh, yeah, there are specifics, correct? There are specifics, but you cannot be a dictator to someone else to what they consider niche. The same way they cannot alter what you believe to be niche. You know what I mean? <gasps> Let me see what this does. <sighs> you know which one's that one? That's the Tinkerbell. <laughs> and then there's this one. But yeah, so that's what it is. You know what I mean? There really is different um, applications to a single word. Today was a lazy day. No scent of the day. Oh, random war, no scent. Wow. Marcial, I believe it's all about perspective. We just need to be flexible with each other. Yes. And that really is the point. That really is the point. There should be no reason why a person who uh, designates... Uh, <laughs> Who designates, what is this, Versace, uh, the Oud niche? <laughs> if they say it's niche smelling, let them say it's niche smelling. Because it's niche for them. It's niche for them. As they uh, learn more, they'll understand better, you know? But what you don't want to do is discourage. I don't play that. I don't play the discouraging another person game. That does not fly by me, and I put a stop to it real fast. Martial must read Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. Now, what is that? Uh, tell me. Tell me information about that, because now I'm intrigued. He says, stop it. <laughs> Oh, damn, haven't not worn anything for a while. How did that feel? Get, oops. Get that off my screen. <laughs> Marcella, it's so hard to take you seriously with that filter. Was it? But let me ask you, you were still taking me seriously. <laughs> I kind of missed a scent on me. I'm sure. I've. You know, I don't remember the last day I didn't wear a fragrance but, like, I know I, I would have to feel weird. <laughs> I know I would have to feel weird. Okay, so, guys, would you like me to read you something? I would love to read you something. From Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. I grew up in South Africa during apartheid, which was awkward because... I was raised in a mixed family with me being the mixed one in the family. My mother, Patricia Nombuyesilo Noah, is black. My father, Robert, is white, Swiss German to be precise, which Swiss German invariably are. During apartheid, one of the, most cr the worst crimes you could commit was having sexual relations with a person of another race. Needless to say, my parents committed a crime. Let me see. One of, one of my favorite trilogy series, the second and third book were the best. I miss it right now. Oh, interesting. I went with my niche. John, that is very niche. Now, for everyone at home, John, John went with his very niche Invictus Victory. <laughs> I feel naked without a scent of the day is what my friend Latifa says. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Farida. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. I want to wear my niche Axe Body Spray. gonna kill me oh my goodness which 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 very niche uh, axe body spray will you be wearing i do tell oh my goodness i love it i love you guys listen when i say i love you i i love you 
All right, so continuing. During apartheid, one of the worst crimes you could commit was having sexual relations with a person of another race. Needless to say, my parents committed that crime. In any society built on institutionalized racism, race mixing doesn't merely challenge the system as unjust, it reveals the system as unsustainable and incoherent. Race mixing proves that races can mix, and in a lot of cases, want to mix, because a mixed person embodies that rebuke to the logic of the system. Race mixing becomes a crime worse than treason. Human being, humans, hu humans being humans, humans being humans and sex being sex, that prohibition never stopped anyone. There were mixed kids in South Africa nine months after the first Dutch boats hit the beach in Table Bay. Just like in America, the colonists here had their way with the native women, as colonists often do. Unlike in America, where anyone with one drop of black blood automatically became black, in South Africa, mixed people came to be classified as their own separate group, neither black nor white, but what we call colored. Colored people, black people, white people, and Indian people were forced to register their race with the government based on those classifications. Millions of people were uprooted and relocated. Indian areas were segregated from colored areas, which were segre segregated from black areas, all of them segregated from white areas and separated from one another by buffer zones of empty land. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. This is like my third time reading this and I didn't notice that. Laws were passed prohibiting sex between Europeans and natives. Laws that were later amended to prohibit sex between whites and all non-whites. The government went to insane lengths to try to enforce these new laws. The penalty for breaking them was five years in prison. There were whole police squads whose only job was to go around peeking through windows, clearly an assignment for only the finest law enforcement officers, and if an interracial couple got caught, God help them. The police would kick down the door, drag the people out, beat them, arrest them. At least that's what they did to the black persons. With the white person, it was more like, look, I'll just say you were drunk, but don't do it again, eh? Cheers. That's how it was with a white man and a black woman. If a black man was caught having sex with a white woman, he'd be lucky if he wasn't charged with rape. This book is fascinating. That's, I ended off on page 22, paragraph one. So when you're reading a book and it says like, let's say page 22, paragraph one, even though you have this whole uh, group of sentences, it's not paragraph one because there is no tab, no indent. So paragraph one would be this one, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> now let me read this. Okay, so Phoenix, someone said Phoenix, oh, the, the, the Axe Phoenix. Axe Phoenix is, uh, is, is niche. I'm going to use my black coconut niche toothpaste. Ooh, powder de moi, yes. Because, yes, it's very niche. Very niche. I'm using my niche al aligners. By <laughs> Marcial, those are great niche glasses. Thank you very much. I went to my niche uh, optometrist and ordered my niche glasses with my very niche lenses. Yes. <laughs> and that's the point guys that's the point it, it, we gotta have fun right we gotta have fun and we cannot oh thank you i'm very i'm glad 
I'm glad. Yes, he is very, very open about his life experiences and the things he's been through, uh, what his mom has been through, you know, growing up mixed. It's just, it's a fascinating book. It's a fascinating book. So that's the book I'm going to be reading from this week. Remember, my weeks end on Saturday. Uh, once I start getting the fragrances in, then I'll start making the YouTube episodes also uh, I'm super excited about that. So again, guys, if you have any ideas of indie houses, niche houses, um, you know, niche like Gucci or something, uh, <laughs> hit me up. Let me know because I'll take I'll take the suggestions and I'll check them out. All right. And if or if there's one that you are wondering about and you haven't tried it, but you'd like to see someone's reaction to it. Yes. My very niche vintage tie. Yes. Vintage, because it was it was purchased in the year of our Lord, 1990. Let me stop. <laughs> oh, thank you. So that's a nice tie. Thank you. Can I tell you something? This tie came with a brown shirt, and it was the set was nineteen dollars, nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents, as uh, Mr. Smelly, nineteen seventy seven, would say. It's a Macy's niche tie. I wish. I wish. It's a Rami niche tie. <laughs> And so I think I got this maybe 2019, 2019 I got it, 2019, over at the, this uh, men's clothing store that was a few blocks away from the cosmetology school that I was going to. And the set was literally 20 bucks. And I just, I, that's one thing I've learned is you don't have to spend so much money to look fancy. Like I found ties that clearly are not Hermes, but are Hermes-esque that came with shirts and the sets were like 25 bucks. You know what I mean? So it's, it's fun. My niche, cheap ties. That is absolutely a cheap gem, absolutely. You come to the Bronx, you will be surprised at how many wonderful things you can find that are actually constructed well for, very, for the Lolo, for the Lolo. Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna sing you guys out. I hope you enjoyed this visit. Thank you for visiting. Goodbye. My lovely fragrance blenders I'll see Let me see what this does And smell I'm wearing my niche onesie with Kiss Gourmand Kiss Oh, I love the niche onesie <laughs> Ciao, ciao amico and smell you soon. Ciao. Thank you for coming in, Sean. I'm heading out as we speak. But thank you for visiting and hopefully we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Love you. Ci vediamo domani.